Welcome to Module 1 of the Antioch Baptist Church Virtual Entrepreneurship Conference 2021. My name is MJ and I'll introduce our first speaker, Dr. Les Taylor, who will share his personal journey as the former director of VBOC and the Boots to Business program. Dr. Les Taylor is the former director of Small Business Administration's National Capital Region Veterans Business Outreach Center, or VBOC, and the entrepreneurship president of the Veteran Business Partnership. After retiring from the US Army as a commissioned officer, Dr. Taylor founded and served as president, CEO, and CFO of an information technology firm where he spent over 23 years supporting the Department of Defense as a command, control, communications, computers, intelligence, surveillance, and, and reconnaissance subject matter expert and strategist. As an entrepreneur, Dr. Taylor grew his company into a multi-billion dollar enterprise. He's well-versed in managing and surviving as a small business while at the same time competing successfully with some of the IT industry giants, especially in the defense sector. Dr. Les Taylor has a bachelor's in education from the University of Texas at El Paso, an MBA in information systems management from New York Institute of Technology, and a PhD in philosophy from Newburgh Theological Seminary. Dr. Taylor will discuss his Christian journey as a soldier, entrepreneur, and educator, and I will turn it over to him now. Uh, thank you, MJ. I appreciate that uh, introduction. introduction. Uh, for those of you who are uh, members of Antioch, you know who I am, but I will introduce myself in a minute. Uh, for those of you who may be joining us who are not members of Antioch, uh, I hope that my uh, presentation today is enlightening and helpful to you. Uh, to begin, I would like to offer up a prayer. If you all would just take a moment of silence with me. Um, if you so desire, you can bow your head and close your eyes. Um, I want to offer a prayer uh, and to our gracious Father and ask that he give me the strength and that he order my steps and my words as I attempt to share my testimony with this audience today with the hope that it will touch somebody somewhere in some way that might help you in your journey. And I offer this prayer in the name of our, our uh, Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. Um, I'm gonna start out by telling you that I gave, I gave my testimony a title. Usually I don't, but I wanna tell you why I gave it a title. And the title is Believing But Not Knowing. This is not a sermon, it's actually a testimony. Believing but not knowing. And as I go through my testimony, I think you will, it will come real clear to you what that title means and how it manifests the journey that I feel that I am taking uh, in my Christian walk. Also, you will see me looking down at some notes and I'm not looking down because I don't know what to say, I'm looking down to stay on course so I don't say too much and go a little bit too left and a little bit too right. I am a very good ex extemporaneous speaker, but that's really not what they've asked me to do today. I wanna to keep my testimony on track. I'm also gonna show you something. It's probably not all that professional to do this, but I was asked to give a testimony that integrates my military, entrepreneurial, uh, business, and I think to some degree, the academic um, areas of my life in my Christian journey and how I have dealt with them. I initially tried to come up with some really cool, sophisticated graphic to show you in the beginning as to how I put this together and how much thought I put into it. And as I started to try to do that, I realized that is not gonna happen. There is no graphic that I could use that would represent what I need to say today to you all. But I wanna show you what I came up with and what I'm gonna to speak to a little bit today. So as I'm going through and you see me looking down at my notes, it's so that I can stay on track and I can share with you some of the things that I felt when I was doing this diagram that I felt were meaningful to me and my family, my career, and my journey. So 
this is what I came up with. And I'm not showing it to you formally because I'm not a professor in the classroom as, as I am occasionally. I'm not preaching. Um, I didn't want this to come across like a college or university lecture. I want it to feel like a testimony. So I wanna talk, say these words and share these expressions with you from me to you, whoever you may be, wherever you may be. Something I say today may be as helpful for you as it has been for me. So that's what I'm gonna do. Now I'm looking at my notes again so I can stay on track. Uh, why a title? Again, I gave this a title because that title really represents a key feature in my, my journey. I feel that from the day that I knew that I was breathing, which was pretty young, I always felt that God was with me, inside of me. I didn't have to go looking for him or ask about him that me and God were like that. But I have to admit that while I've always believed I didn't always know. I didn't know who God was. I didn't really know what exactly God did and how he did it. Knowing now that God can do anything, but still I didn't know. When God's working in your life, how do you know God? It's God. Uh, so believing but not knowing may be where some of you are or not. And that, that in itself does not matter, but I'm sharing with you the truth of my journey. So the essence of that believing but not knowing is this. If you know God, you love God. If you love God, you trust God. And as I'm going through my testimony, you will, it will come clear to you how I, I came to line these acknowledgments up in my life as they relate to my, my career, my upbringing, my military, my academic experience, and my business experience. Okay, so. So again, before I start into my testimony, I wanna offer a thanks to Antioch Baptist Church uh, Pastor Osbury and uh, the ministers of our church for allowing me to have this honor to present my testimony to you all today. And a special thanks to uh, Brother Bob Rogers for, for whatever reason, giving me uh, the honor of having this position on this program. I hope and pray that I do well uh, for him and by him and that God will be pleased with what I'm saying and sharing with you all today. So let me, let me get started. Now to give my uh, testimony its uh, proper uh, perspective, I'm gonna offer an opening uh, verse. It's Romans 5, one through four. This is gonna be the beginning of my testimony and the bookend of that passage is going to be another separate passage that I will read at the end. And then I think when it's all said and done, you all will, will get where I'm coming from. Romans 5, 4, verse one. Therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse two, by whom also we have access by faith into his grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Verse three, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience and patience, experience, and experience hope. That is gonna be the framework for everything that I say to you today. And I hope that I can share it with you in a way 
that you understand how my life has been impacted by that passage. And one of the things that I will say up front is that I was a seriously grown man before I could wrap my head around glorification of tribulation. That just didn't work for me when I was younger. But thanks to some education, thanks to a deeper understanding and exposure to the word, I know exactly what that means now. <clears throat> and, and I can handle it. Um, so I come to you today as uh, Les Taylor, uh, dad, honey, you know, that's from my wife, um, brother, son, uncle, papa, uh, Dr. Taylor, Professor Taylor, director at VBP, and various other titles. But the one that I cherish the most is the title of Child of God. That's the one I feel I have worked the hardest to earn and the one that means most to me in my life today. Um, so I'm going to start my journey kind of typically the way most of us do when we give a testimony, but there's a reason for it. I'm going to start my testimony with where I was born. I was born in Champaign, Illinois. I was the third of four children born to Dorothy and James Taylor. Dorothy Taylor was my mother. She was a, a kind, gentle um, woman. I believe in her heart, she also was a child of God. I was born to James Taylor, who was a military man. I'm an Air Force brat. And he also was honored with the distinction of being a Tuskegee Airman. A little rough around the edges and a little tough to live with, but nonetheless, a father who I loved. So I have a couple of stories I need to tell to put everything into perspective, and then I'm going to speed up a little bit. So there's the military connection. I was simply born into it. I grew up with it. Uh, it's been a part of my life since the day I was born. And, and um, you know, I feel like I was born with a military ID and commissary privileges already tucked in my pocket. What I think about the entrepreneurial connection is that it may have been uh, hidden um, in those early Champaign, Illinois years where, where, where I was born, and I'll tell you why. Now, at the age of eight, <clears throat> I realized that kids in our in my neighborhood couldn't like get around and go to the store and buy candy and stuff like that. But I could. I had a bike. Um, I had the freedom to go wherever I wanted, pretty much in town, as long as I was back home at a certain time of the day. So I decided that I would go to the store and I would buy a candy for a penny and I would come back to the neighborhood and sell it to the to my friends for two pennies. So I'd go in the house, get a chair out of the kitchen, turn the chair around backwards, you know, so that it was like a barrier and the kids had to reach underneath in the gap uh, at the bottom of the chair, put their money in, I scoot their candy out. I couldn't have made more than about maybe 15 cents, but I felt like, wow, what a powerful thing here. So somewhere in my head, I had the entrepreneurial spirit. spirit. Later on, I did almost like the same thing. I grabbed a handful of my mother's freshly baked oatmeal cookies and I took them out and I ran down the street and I sold them to some workers out on the street for 25 cents a piece. Again, I probably didn't make more than about a dollar or so, but boy, it, it felt real good. So I think somewhere God planted a seed in me that he nurtured for almost 40 years before it came to fruition in my life. So, uh, and my mother used to tell me that I had no problem lending money to uh, family members as long as they signed an IOU and paid me interest on my money if they paid me on time. So somewhere in there, um, the military was there, the Entrepreneurship was there, and 
I need to speak to the tribulation part. Tribulation, family, back in those days, you guys I know I'm old enough to uh, suggest that back in those days, everybody had tribulations. Uh, it was not uncommon to have a whole lot of dysfunctionality in your family, and we did. Patience. Um, as a young man, I had to deal with a lot of things that I, most of which I did not have the patience for because I didn't understand it. Uh, experience. Faith was not an overt expression in my life in Champaign with my family. We stayed there until I was about nine years old. Um, hope, there was always hope for a better day. We left Champaign, Illinois, and Dad got transferred down to Lake Charles, Louisiana. And in Lake Charles, Louisiana, uh, we went from a totally integrated society in Champaign down to a totally segregated society down in Lake Charles. So I had to go through the throes of learning how to live in a segregated society. But however it is, Lake Charles was one of the most beautiful experiences that I ever had in my life. I got to live in an all black environment, black school, black neighborhood, black grocery store, black repair shop, black everything. That's something that I had quasi experienced in Illinois, but not totally. And I have to say that I absolutely loved it. I went from an environment where I, I exercised no religious, um, there were no religious ex expressions in our house. We didn't pray. We didn't go. I don't remember going to church with my family at all, ever. Um, so got to Lake Charles at maybe eight or nine years old. I hooked up with a family in the neighborhood, a friend of mine ended up dressing up every Sunday, walking across to their house, going to church, did that for five years, had one of the most wonderful faith experiences in my life. So all the things that I felt and believed got solidly rooted down in Lake Charles, Louisiana, as I exercised my faith with a fam family that was not my own. All black environment, regular exercise of faith. I'm talking going to church at, you know, 8.30, 9 o'clock in the morning, coming home at 8.30, 9 o'clock at night, and, and Bible study and all that all during the week. Join the choir. You know, I can't carry a tune in a wheelbarrow, but I was out there trying to sing and visiting churches. You all know the, root, the routine. I got to experience all that, and it was just wonderful. I loved it. Um, Lake Charles was a point in time when I made some decisions that were lifelong decisions. One was while I was there from about the age of nine to about 14, I decided to give my life to Christ. I got baptized at the age of 12 and I felt like I was renewed and I was ready to go and I was ready to get on with God's work. I also decided that um, I was going to be an officer in the military. I liked it. I liked the military, and I wanted to do it because my, my dad did it. Um, so when I left Lake Charles, I left there with some serious convictions and some things in my mind that helped me through life later on. Dad got transferred to France. Um, we were, I went to a couple of high schools in France. Oh, by the way, I went to four different high schools in four years before I graduated. Went to France, I was back in that environment, no church, no praying, um, adjusting to a weird social environment where I had to live at a high school campus for five and a half days out of the week and went home on the weekends. Uh, socially, I was, you know, one of, you guys can fill in the blank, being a a young black uh, student over there. There weren't that many of us. So we were in a white environment trying to deal with all that comes along with the social aspects of, of all that stuff. Um, left France, went to Amarillo, Texas, right back in to a um, quasi, you know, minority status again, ethnic minority stuff had black friends and had white friends, but had more white friends than not because I went to a 
predominantly white school. No church, no praying, none of that. Left Amarillo, and I'm telling this story because it adds up to a lot. Left Amarillo, got a scholarship to go to Texas Western College in El Paso, Texas. It is now known as the University of Texas at El Paso. The trip to Lake Charles changed my life. The next big change in my life came in El Paso. In El Paso, had a scholarship to run track, got hurt, decided to give up my scholarship, was committed enough to my wife who, well, let me back up, met, met a girl, you all know who she is, uh, started my college career there, stayed in college even though I was ready to, to drop out to take care of my family, um, got married, had our first child there, lost that child after three days, very traumatic, still, still dealing with it a little bit today. I was in ROTC, so I had this hope and I had this dream amongst all this tribulation that I would come out on the other side and be an officer and take my bride off into the sunset and walk the red carpet and all that kind of stuff. We didn't get the red carpet, but we got pretty much everything else. So while I was in El Paso, back into the church, deep into church, those of you who know my wife, you all call her Sister Taylor. Um, you're not going to live with that woman if, if you're not getting into your faith and going to church. That's just the way it was. Loved it. To this day, I call it home. I was born in Champaign, but my home is in El Paso, Texas. My, our son is buried in El Paso, Texas. I have family members there who love me. I love them. And that's the place that I call home and I will call it home forever. From there, we started our journey into, so tribulations, a whole bunch of tribulations that, that you lost my, gave up my scholarship. We lost our son, we got married. We were poor as church mice, didn't have a penny to our name, just in love thinking that, you know, God was gonna take care of us. And in his own way, he did, not the way I would have wanted it, but the way he wanted it. Went into the army after uh, graduation and summer camp, started off uh, down at uh, Fort Gordon, Georgia, me and my wife and our first uh, living child who was a daughter who is with us, to, living with us today. They don't go away, <laughs> but we love her to death. And I think part of the reason that she's here is because she loves us to death as well. And we're trying to support each other to get through these current trials and tribulations in life today. A lot of what I experienced in my life were the result of choices that I didn't wanna make the way I made them. Uh, would I have rather stayed in Champaign to go to Lake Charles? Well, yeah, as a young man, I just wanted to stay where I was comfortable. But had I not made that, had God not made that choice for me, I would not have experienced Lake Charles the way I did. Did I have to go to Texas Western College? No, I had another option to go to Abilene Christian College, but something told me take the one in El Paso, well, the something was, it was a bigger scholarship, so I took it. Uh, I didn't know anything about El Paso or just barely knew where it was, so I took it. But that decision was made for me. Had I not gone to El Paso, I have no idea what the quality of my life would be. And God knows I, I just can't conceive of going through life without my wife. She is a beautiful spirit and a kind spirit. So I've got to speed up a little bit. I think I'm 25 minutes in. So got in the military, another choice. Well, went to Vietnam, served my country in Vietnam. You know, that's a tribulation in and of itself. Um, had to get adjusted to that. Patience, 
I, I had I had a, a unit of a hundred really knucklehead kind of soldiers uh, who were dear and kind people, but were troubled. And we were all troubled because we were in a war zone. So that wasn't easy to do. The hope was come home alive, come home in one piece, hopefully, and I did. So another thing that changed the trajectory of my life dramatically was after coming from Vietnam, talking to an assignment officer who said, oh, by the way, I think it would be a good idea for you to go to this certain engineering school. And my answer was not gonna happen. I do not wanna go to in, an engineering school. I got a BA in art education. I, I do not want to be an engineer. Long story short, the argument was over. He signed me up and we were on our way to Fort Monmouth to the engineering school. Long story short, it burned me out. I passed with fine colors. On top of the engineering school was the addition of an executive MBA out of New York Institute of Technology. I managed to finish that as a distinguished graduate and that degree changed my life. So Lake Charles, El Paso and Fort Monmouth Engineering School, we call it the Long Line School, literally changed my life. And I've been living that business life since the day I graduated from the MBA and exited the military. So my opening uh, verse is a, is a testimony to how I got here. How, how did I even get to be the VBOC Veterans Business Outreach Center Director in Springfield, Virginia? Now you know my journey. That journey started back at Fort Monmouth. The Fort Monmouth journey started back at Texas Western College. The Texas Western College journey started back in Lake Charles. The entrepreneurial thing started with my two cent candy sales in Champaign, Illinois. I didn't even realize some of this until I started to work this thing out after Bob Rogers gave me the invitation to show up. So one of the things that I want to review about what I've said here today is in the first 17 years of my life, 12 of those years were void of any kind of expressions of faith in my house or in my life. Five of those years set the stage for the rest of my life in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Five years set the stage for the rest of my life. I can, and I have to continue. You got the mil military part. We then came back to Northern Virginia. We're in the process of doing what we do. We were in search of a church, visited Antioch a couple of times, uh, decided to continue to look, started going to church, uh, in Maryland, and was taking us an hour to get over there, an hour back, uh, but we loved it. Then we decided, up, oh, we got to look for something a little closer to home. We ended up in Antioch. Fast forward several years. We've been at Antioch for over 20 years now, but fast forward several years, and my wife one day said, oh, remember that? Antioch Bible Institute study that we've been talking about for so many years where, you know, you learn the Bible and the word and all that. And I said, sure. She says, okay, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to do it. And I said, sure, let's do it. And then a couple of days later, she says, oh, we need, we're, we're all signed up and we're ready to go. And I said, okay, fine. And she says, you do know this is a three-year course of study, don't you? And I almost passed out. I almost passed out. It's a what? Three years. And I must say that the ABI experience goes right along with Lake Charles, UTEP, 
for, and Fort Monmouth, and it may have actually skipped to the head of that line. Because I can now say to you that, and I did have frustrations with ABI, not the word, but the process. And there were tribulations for me, there were trials for me. And the hope was that I would become more comfortable in the word. And that came to pass. I can proudly say it came to pass so well through the efforts of a couple of individuals in ABI who grabbed my heart. And one was Sister Sherry Tolson. The other one was my wife. My wife got me in there and kept me in there. Sherry demonstrated to me the degree to which I needed to understand the word, to know how to use the word to guide my life. And as a result of her exposure and her influence on me, I can now proudly tell you that I am Dr. Taylor and I hold a PhD in Christian apologetics. That's my journey. And I think I'm gonna to have to shut down here for a few minutes. There's more things that I would like to say, but I'm gonna close it out with these, these words and let me find them. I'm going to close out with Jeremiah 29, 11. Many of you know Jeremiah 29, 11 by heart. I know it by heart too. But if I try to say it by heart, I'm going to mess it up. So I'm going to read it. This is the book in, <coughs> this is the, excuse me, this is the book in passage to the one that I led in with. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not, not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. I can tell you that while my life did not go the way I would have planned it, it went the way God planned it. And it took me a while to catch up with how God works. I told you that in the beginning. How does God do what he does in our lives? And how do we know it's him? When you, when you study the word, as we did in ABI, and I want to thank everybody who was associated with ABI, and I probably owe a, an apology for my behavior to uh, a few people there, but I'm not going to give them the satisfaction of knowing who it is just yet. But I love them all, and I hope they love me in Christ as well. But I've come to le learn the word. I've come to know who God is. I've come to love God. And above all, I have come to trust in God. And trusting in God takes some serious faith because you know, we are not guaranteed anything. And when God puts something in front of us, good, bad, or ugly, he expects us to deal with it through our faith in him. I was not always there. I didn't know how to do that. I know how to do that now. So I'm going to reiterate something. I can't close my testimony without giving a hallelujah, uh, shoot, a shout out to God for blessing me with maybe one of the most wonderful angels on earth, and that's my wife. Um, she, has, she has helped me come a long way in my faith. Uh, when I thought I was there and I had it, I wasn't there and I didn't have it. But I saw it in her. She had it. She was there and she had it. So I could draw from her. And then together we have built on that. And I feel real confident that I stand on my own now. Uh, you all know her as Sister Taylor and you know her heart. And you know how kind she is. Um, I thank every God every day for uh, the love and the faith um, that she brings in to my life. 
So in closing my testimony for this audience, I can truly say, I know God, I trust God, and I love God, and I trust God. And I hope that God will continue to bless all of you. I hope that I have said something here today in some way, um, maybe not the perfect delivery, but in some way will touch you and help you in your walk, your Christian walk as well. And I look forward to seeing many of you uh, someday real soon. God bless you all.